the um, point that I'd like you to address here is what happens in America when uh, an American company with a big offshore presence is able to garner for itself a lower overall tax rate than often, indeed, usually smaller American corporations that don't have the scale to get involved in offshore tax gimmickry or offshore international operations and uh, now have to compete with a company that gets the advantage of a lower tax rate from having offshore operations. It seems that that's an incentive to drive jobs offshore, and it seems that it's an unfair competitive advantage for the bigger company. Your thoughts? Thank you, Senator. Um, yes, uh, these are very important issues that you raise. And um, as you know, the president has put forth proposals to strengthen the guilty tax, um, to increase the rate and apply it on a country by country basis, um, which would uh, to a large extent address the issue that you are raising in terms of um, larger companies which are more likely to have international operations being able to obtain lower tax rates on their foreign operations than they pay on operations within the U.S. And then also the OECD negotiations um, are a opportunity um, for really the first time in a century to overhaul the international tax architecture and um, uh, prevent or mitigate a race to the bottom in corporate tax rates. Um, so if confirmed, I would look forward to working with you and with all the members of the committee in the Senate um, on these issues and understanding your perspectives on them. Great. Um, just one thing to flag for all the witnesses is that um, Chairman Wyden has announced that he is going to be trying to put together a uh, proper price on carbon emissions, um, something that a great many people support. There are probably four or five bills in the Senate right now uh, pointing in that direction. And um, obviously a bill like that can create very significant revenue. And I just wanted to flag that prospect for you as you're thinking about um, what taxes and revenues look like, that the um, carbon pricing battle uh, looms ahead. But uh, I think we've got a very good chance of getting a carbon a fee on emissions so that pollution is no longer subsidized by these uh, oil and gas companies. The uh, second thing I want to flag is that um, we've asked Secretary Yellen to look at the saga of the 501c3s and the 501c4s. My nutshell version of the story is that as soon as Citizens United opened up unlimited money into politics, the next thing the big donors wanted was to hide who they were. And they went straight to the 501c4s and then associated 501c3s to hide uh, behind the IRS, I think very contrary to congressional intent. But with impeachment threats against the IRS commissioner, with referrals to DOJ for prosecution by of IRS personnel, they did their level best to try to batter the IRS into submission not to enforce or not to uh, amend the regulations for 501c3s and 501c4s, the result being a massive influx of anonymous money, dark money, into elections. Um, I think it's important that we look back on that period and get a true narrative, one consistent with the Treasury IG report that showed that the original narrative cooked up by the dark money groups was false, um, and that we clear out the appropriations riders that uh, were erected to defend the dark money operation so that uh, Treasury can regulate again in this space and that we clean up the swamp of dark money and the misuse of the 501c3s and 501c4s that is now so uh, profoundly a part of our political system and and newly. <laughs> we didn't we didn't have this more a decade ago and um, now it's everywhere and your world intersects with my world here because I have to live with the pollution of our political dialogue caused by these groups. So we'll follow up on those two things, carbon pricing and 501c3 abuse, but I wanted to flag them today. Thank you, Chairman.